Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Friday Functions video. This is Audrey. Today, we're going to talk about coalesce. One of my favorite formulas to pronounce because it took a bunch of practice. But this is a really cool expression that can help you replace a blank. So I call it the fill in the blanks function, right? Because what it does, as you can see right down here, coalesce starts at the beginning of the argument list, and that's all the different arguments that you add in the function, and evaluates each argument in turn. So first, second, third, and so forth, until it finds the first blank um, expression. So if I just kind of get my laser pointer here, these are the arguments of coalesce. Coalesce starts at the beginning and evaluates one at a time in the order that you put it in there until it finds a non-blank value. And then it returns that. So the example that they give on the doc site is coalesce, and then there's four different dynamic tags or whatever that end up in blank. And then there's two and there's three. So two is the first non-blank value. So it stops. It doesn't keep evaluating. It stops at that very first one, and that's what it will return. So let's look at how this can be useful. And I encourage you to put in the comments other things you think coalesce would be good for. But there's a ton. This is a very handy little function. So let me just go to flow here and show you that, well, first I'm going to go to SharePoint and show you that I have this list here on SharePoint called projects. And the projects list is something that the admin basically fills out every time we get a new project. And it has the project name, the sales coordinator, the description of the project, the contractor, which happens to be a lookup field. I'm going to point that out in the dynamic tags, how you handle the lookup. It's the region where the project is and then the lead contact. Now, the lead contact is somebody who basically funded this project and they're not in my company. And so I want to send them an email message whenever a new project is created, kind of like a let you know the project has been accepted, here's the parameters. This email might be a really awesome welcome message. But the admin who fills out this list does not always have a lead contact name. Now, where that can get sticky is when we send that error message, I mean, when we send that, send that welcome message from Flow, Flow is going to have an error on all the lines that are blank, right? So the flow is gonna fail because it is really hard to send an email to nobody, right? So basically flow says, no, no, I can't do that. That's not possible. And it's it errors out on you and it's not fun to watch that, right? But then you're like, well, how do I fill in the blank when it runs into these null values? Well, coalesce can help us here. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my flow and you'll notice I've already started a flow that is getting items from that project list. Now, as a result of the items I get on this list, and I might actually, um, in this particular case, I'm going to send an email to everyone in the list. And so if I hit a new step here, I actually um, want to uh, narrow this down to three columns, right? So I'm gonna use a select um, and just select the columns I want. So select, think about it like SQL. It's a way of picking what you want. I'm gonna select the columns I want from the get items. So I'm gonna pop that value in there from get items. And what I want is I want the project name. And so I'm gonna go down here and use the title of this list. Then I want the contractor name. And remember I told you it's not hard to handle lookups here, right? Because what we do in Flow whenever there's a lookup is we give you two values for every lookup column. We give you the ID and the display name. So in this case, we've got a column called contractor assigned. We give you an ID from that column and a value. So if I want the contractor assigns name, 
I'm going to choose value. If I want to know what the ID number is in the parent list called contractors, then I would choose ID. So I'm going to choose the value because I want that contractor's name. That's a good point to keep in mind, though, if you use lookup columns elsewhere. And then I'm going to also include something called external contacts. And this is going to be that external contacts column that I know it happens to have no values. Now on SharePoint, if I didn't want it to have no values, I could set that setting in SharePoint that says no null values allowed, right? I could, uh, I could do that. I could make it required and I could also make it non-duplicate. There's all kinds of things I could do to make sure that that's not um, blank. But here I'm going to just go ahead and pop that result in here. So I'm gonna look for external contacts in alphabetical order. If I don't see it, I'll click see more. Maybe I named it something else. What did I name it? Ah, lead contact. All right, let's just double click, check that on SharePoint. What is that? It's called lead contact, all right? So it's an external contact that's not in my company, but it is, they're a lead, they're important. I'm also going to add the created by or the author of this of this um, project, right? Because basically I can pick, so um, let's do the coordinator's name. Let's do the coordinator's name, right? And then I can put the coordinator's name. This is the sales coordinator. And I can put the coordinator email. So, and the reason I'm pulling these out is because if the lead contact is blank, I'm actually going to send the email to the sales coordinator, which means the sales coordinator will realize they didn't give the admin a lead and they will get, make sure that that admin gets a lead. Now, of course we could do if then statements in here, but I just want to show you how to use coalesce. So now we have an alternative person to give this email to. I could have also used the, the admin so that the admin would get it, which would be the created by. And then that one, that would be created by email. Again, because it's a profile property, we get way more than just the ID and the value. For profile properties, that's a complex field that gives us picture, job title, department, all that stuff. But I want the email, okay? Because um, I might decide to use that email as well, okay? Depends on what I want to do to replace my missing lead contact, all right? So now that I've got that, let's just, just run a test and make sure it works. Okay, I'm running my flow. You'll notice that we've done a few updates. Um, you'll be seeing these soon if you don't see them already. They're just to make things a little cleaner, a little more consistent. And you'll notice here in the body that I've got back just what I asked for. The project name, the contractor name, the external contacts, which in this case is null, the coordinator name, the coordinator email, and the created by email, okay? So in most cases, I have an email address, but in some of these cases, I have nulls, and those nulls will not work for email. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna create our send email message here. Send an email. And I'm just gonna use the send an email for Office 365 Outlook. And then normally, what I would do in the two is just insert the, the lead contact, right? Now, because we are working with an array or a table, this is like we asked for a whole bunch of stuff, which means that we have more than one lead contact as a result of our select and get. When I select this, I'm going to be forced into an apply for each situation. Now, yes, I could get around it by doing first, but I'm going to go ahead and move into that apply to each situation just by clicking lead contact. And it will add the send of email as part of an apply to each. That's a result of the get items because that's where the lead contact was. And then right in here, 
Um, what I want to do though, is I don't really want that to be that because if that is it, it will fail. So let's just prove this, right? Um, project coordinator notification is my title. Notification for project. And then I'll put the project name, which is just the title. And then in the body, I will just put something simple. Your coordinator name is, and then I'll put the coordinator's name, the sales coordinator name, which is right here. And now if I run this and test this, all of you know for a fact, I'm sure you know this, this flow is going to fail. So here's what we're looking for. We're looking for the little red bar to prove that we're right. And it says that we failed, right? Flow has failed. We expected that. Don't you love when you can predict that, right? And it's failed because some of the twos of the um, list itself are blank. And so that's going to give us a bad request because we can't send an email to nobody, right? So how are we going to fix this? We're going to use coalesce in this case. Not that this is the only way to do this. This is the way I'm going to do it today to demonstrate coalesce. So here's an interesting thing. If I go over to my expressions and I type coalesce, and then I put my brackets, right? When I go to my dynamic content, I am not going to see lead contact. Isn't that interesting? And that's because of the the context in which the expression area is working is not going to give us this individual item from get items so what we're going to do to get this is we're going to look behind the scenes now some of you have seen this before but if i hover over any field anywhere it will tell me kind of like what is it how is it being read in the back end how is logic apps reading this how is this being seen right and i can use these expressions um, i can use them in my advanced expressions now i have two choices here i can sit here and type this you know kind of like write it down somewhere and then go type it because there's no way to like right click and copy it right there or you can use peak code peak code will enable you to copy that so before i go into peak code Notice that we are in the send an email action and we are on the two line. So kind of pay attention to where you are before you click the three dots and then click peak code. Now I'm actually looking for the two lined, the two line for my send an email. And here it is. I want everything in here except the at sign and except the double quotes because this is what is represented when that dynamic tag drops down, it actually converts it to this um, expression here for it to manage its JSON and its logic app story and so forth and so on. So what I will do is copy that. Again, I don't need the at sign and I don't need the number, the double quotes. I'm just gonna copy that. I could have just written it down, but I, it's my, I don't like to trust my own writing. Now I can delete this. I can go into my expression era and type coalesce. Now, if you want to do that a different way, you most definitely can. I'm sure there's other ways. This is the way I go and get my first argument for my coalesce. So my first argument is the thing that I'm expecting, hoping, praying is not blank, but I actually want to replace that with something. So I want to hit a comma here and I want to replace that with something else, which in this case, I think I'm going to use, um, the coordinator name. Now this is where the select is going to come handy. So I'm just going to copy the expression I've written so far, because if I click out of here and I don't click, okay, it's lost or I can click. Okay. Um, it's just not finished yet. So I can put something in here to finish it because it's got to have at least two, um, let's see what's going on here. It's got to have at least two, uh, variables or parameters in it. And I want them to have single quotes. 
and then I'll say, okay. And now that's kind of like a placeholder. The other thing I could have done because I'm not finished with that function and I didn't really want to lose it. The other option I have is to open up like notepad and I can paste it in there. And that's my way of kind of holding on to what I have so far, but here's what I need. So this first thing here represents what I hope is not blank, right? What I hope is not great blank, but in the case that it is blank, I will send the email instead to the sales coordinators email. So I'm going to go back up in here, open my select. And here I have the sale coordinator email right here. And you can hover over it and you'll see it says item sales coordinator email. So I'm going to use my peak code again to grab that, right? And so you can see, I can just easily grab the email of the sales coordinator. I don't need the at sign. I don't need the quotes. And now I'm going to go back into my function and paste that after the comma. And so let's take this whole thing and look at it. First, I'm going to hit update get rid of that extra semicolon. I'm going to go notepad and paste that second thing. So basically what this is saying is coalesce. My first value that to evaluate is the lead contact. So if the lead contact is not blank, coalesce will return the lead contacts email address from that column. But if it is blank, it will continue the evaluation and go to the next one. And now it's going to check the sales coordinator email. Is that blank? And it will keep evaluating. So I can keep, I can put another comma here, right? I can go back and get the created by email. I'm going to use peak code here again, get that created by email. And I don't actually need that at sign. So I'll delete it. Sometimes it's hard for me to select without it. And now what I'm saying, it's going to evaluate the first one. If it finds an email for the lead contact, then that's what it'll use. But if it doesn't, if it's blank, it's going to go to the next one and say, Oh, do we have a sales coordinator email? Oop. If that has something, it'll use that. And it won't evaluate the third one. If this one is not blank, it will not continue evaluating. It will just use that. But if that is blank too, then it goes to the next one and so on and so on and so on. So until it finds a non-blank value. And so when I'm using this function, I make sure that there's a highest, you like 99.9% .9 probability, there will be a non-blank value found. And that's what I did with the author because basically that's impossible that the author of that list item would ever be blank. And so that's my last choice. And that would prevent the flow from failing because the other two are blank. Okay. And then I took that and let that be there so that now if we test this, uh, and it's okay because all of the fake emails in here are my own. So we're going to run the flow and say done. And now we will not have a failed flow. Our flow is going to be very happy because it's going to find somebody to send an email to every time. So if I look at number one, it actually sent it to the sales coordinator and the coordinator will know, oops, I must have not given the admin the uh, right um, email address. And so they'll, they'll do that or I'll specify how to do that. But if there was an email that worked in the lead contact, that's where it sent it. So this is a really great way of making sure that you don't accidentally force your flow to fail because it needs something. You can use coalesce to fill in the blank when something is null and that null value is needed to perform an action, such as in this case for send an email. I really hope you found this useful. I tried to weave in a few tips and such. Enjoy your flow experience because this is the kind of thing that can help you be not only a good flow user, but a very efficient, low era type of flow user. So I look forward to seeing what you do with this. Put down in the comments if you think of other ways to use Coalesce. 
And I look forward to seeing you enjoy using that advanced function. Have a great weekend and I'll be talking to you soon.